Hey guys and welcome to yet another true crime video for those of you who are just joining us Hi, my name is Wengi and thank you so much for stopping by So today we're going to be covering our very first international case Today we're going to be going all the way to the United States and we're going to be covering the case of Autumn Pasquale But you already know that before I get into the video I have to issue out my usual disclaimer that I mean absolutely no disrespect to anybody that I'm going to be talking about in this video and all the families that were and are affected by this case this video is purely for educational purposes and all the information that I'm going to be talking about was gotten off of the internet and simply compiled into one video and now let's get into it so Aram Pasquale was born on the 29th of October 1999 in New Jersey to parents Jennifer Cornwell and Anthony Pasquale she was described as a well-behaved and responsible young lady who barely got into any trouble and just always did as she was instructed. Like she was just really, really responsible. When she was just three years old, her parents unfortunately got a divorce and Autumn and her older brother AJ and younger sister Natalie all had to move in with their father in Clayton, New Jersey, but they would visit their mother from, you know, time to time. A few weeks before Autumn's 13th birthday, she started browsing the internet looking for the perfect gift to mark her 13th birthday. She was going on different sites and different Facebook pages just looking for this perfect gift until one day she came across a white BMX bike that was up for sale on eBay and she instantly fell in love with it. She showed her father the picture of the BMX hoping that her father would get it for her and indeed he did. She was absolutely in love with her bike. She posted about it, she posted it, she rode it everywhere she went and everybody just knew that Autumn and her new white BMX bike were inseparable. She also joined a couple of Facebook groups and other things of that nature, just looking for people to trade bike parts with in order to make her bike look more appealing. And of course, as she was doing this, she was also talking to people who she didn't really know, like she was talking to strangers. And Anthony did try to check his kids' social media and try to make sure that they weren't talking to anybody that they weren't supposed to. But of course, it was difficult to keep track of everything. I mean, I wouldn't know what to say start so I'm assuming that he probably knew about this but he wasn't going through every single person that Autumn was talking to you know yeah but anyways one night as Autumn was browsing through Facebook as she usually did she came across a picture of a BMX with blue handlebars and she posted a comment underneath that picture asking if the BMX belonged to the person who posted it she immediately got a response from the person on the other end saying that it did belong to him and Autumn said that the blue handlebars would look so good on her new white BMX so the person on the other end suggested that he and Autumn meet up to exchange some bike parts. Autumn was used to meeting up with people to exchange bike parts and over and about that this is somebody who lived in her small community so I'm pretty sure that nothing seemed out of the ordinary about this person and so Autumn agreed to meet up with him. On the Saturday of the homecoming weekend, Autumn's big brother AJ was playing in the homecoming game and Anthony was going to go watch him play and just support him but Autumn had plans to meet up with her Facebook friend to trade bike parts. She told Anthony that she was going to go meet up with a friend and Anthony agreed telling her to be back by her 8pm curfew. Autumn had a lot of friends and Anthony didn't know which friend she was referring to this time around but like I've already mentioned earlier on Autumn was very responsible and I'm pretty sure that there was nothing that seemed out of the ordinary about this particular meetup so Anthony agreed and they both left their house and went to their different destinations but not before telling each other how much they love one another. At around 8 p.m. that night, Anthony went back home from the game, hoping to find Autumn already home, but she wasn't. This was the first time Autumn was late for her curfew, so Anthony decided to give her some more time. After all, it was the homecoming weekend and she had probably lost track of time with her friends. That's what he thought, but when 8.30 came and went with still no sign of Autumn, Anthony began panicking. 
He called Autumn several times and even sent her multiple text messages asking where she was and also asking her to pick up the phone or just come back home. But Autumn was not picking her phone up nor was she responding to his text messages. Autumn was the type of person to call when she ran late and she'd also usually pick up her father's phone calls almost immediately so this was unlike her at all. Anthony began calling her friends asking if Autumn was with them and asking if they knew who she had gone to meet that day or if they'd seen her at all and all of Autumn's friends said that they weren't with her, they didn't know who she went to meet that day and they hadn't seen her all day. This time Anthony knew for a fact that something had gone horribly wrong and that's when he decided to call the police who initially said that Autumn was a runaway. Anthony and other people who knew Autumn tried to convince the police that Autumn had absolutely no reason to run away from home but the police just told Anthony to wait and that Autumn would probably be home soon. But Anthony refused to just wait at home holding on to the hope that his daughter would walk in through the door at any moment and he actually decided to go outside and look for her daughter all through the night. He went to her usual hangouts and other places that he thought Autumn could have possibly went to that day but he found nothing. The following morning there was still no sign of Autumn. The police questioned Autumn's neighbors and some of her family members although at this time they were still thinking that she was a runaway. The people in the small town also woke up to the news that Autumn Pasquale was missing and some of them even started looking. Barb de France was also one of those people. Barb was a friend of Anthony's and she had been searching since the early hours of the morning looking for clues that could help pinpoint Autumn's whereabouts. They were trying everything they could and even set up a Facebook page to try and help find Autumn and this Facebook page almost immediately blew up. There were people from neighboring towns who also came to look for Autumn and there were some people from the community who also had some search parties and spread out over the area looking for Autumn and there were also some candlelit visuals, you know, that were made for Autumn. Like the community was just doing anything and everything to try and show that they were in solidarity with the Pasquale family. In addition to creating a Facebook page for Autumn, the family also reached out to a missing persons investigator called Joe Nick. 24 hours had already passed since Autumn went missing and we all know that when dealing with missing persons, time is of the essence. The quicker the investigation takes off, the greater the chances are of finding the missing person alive. Anyway, so Joe first went to the Pasquale home and went to Autumn's room. He wanted to see what type of person Autumn was and what type of life she lived. And he says that when he got to Autumn's room, he instantly knew that Autumn was definitely not a runaway. He says that her room was filled with love and he could tell that this was a kid who had absolutely no reason to run away from home and he knew that he had to start with his investigation right away. From Autumn's house, he spaced out, asking almost everybody in the neighborhood some questions because he believed that someone, even if it's just one person, someone must have seen something. He had also heard that Autumn had left his house to go and meet up with somebody to trade bike parts that day. So as he was asking these questions, he was also asking about people who were known for either fixing bicycles or trading bike parts. And as he was asking his questions, he kept hearing about the Robinson brothers. Dante and Justin Robinson kept popping up more than twice but they were not known for fixing or trading bike parts. Instead they were known for stealing bikes. Because of this Joe decides to dismiss the Robinson boys and doesn't take a hard look at them when suddenly 17 year old Dante Robinson goes to the police and gives them some information that could help crack the case. Dante said that Autumn had been texting his younger brother Justin and that the two had made some plans to meet up on the Saturday that Autumn went missing but Autumn never showed up. So after hearing this, Joe decides to head over to the Robinsons house and ask some questions. Justin was unfortunately not home but Dante managed to show Joe the text messages between Justin and Autumn and Joe wrote all of these messages down but there was one message in particular that stood out to Joe and this message read it was something like this I'm not I'm not gonna say this is an exact quote because 
I really don't know. But anyways, the message was, I was there and I didn't see you. Is your house the blue one? House number 77. And this message in particular stood out to Joe because the Robinsons' house was definitely not blue and their house number was not 77. So the police and Joe knew from the Facebook messages that Autumn was at the blue house on the afternoon that she disappeared and Joe started his search for the blue house hoping to find something that could help him pinpoint Autumn's location because he knew that something must have happened to Autumn between the blue house and the Robinson's house. So he got in the car and started looking for the blue house but he didn't even have to look that far because just 350 yards away from the Robinson's house he saw a blue house with the number 77 written in a big bold and black font. So after finding this house him and his police associate decided to get out of the car and took the route that they thought that Autumn must have taken from this blue house to the Robinson's house and they were searching as they went. Joe was looking at all the spots that he thought that somebody could hide at and that's when he came across this old abandoned and worn down factory and he decided to walk inside the yard and look around the factory because the factory had a lot of hiding spots. But anyways, as Joe was looking around, he couldn't find anything, but he did see a broken fence and decided to go through the broken fence to see what was on the other side. To his surprise, when he got through the broken fence, he found himself back at the Robinson's house. But this time, he was in their backyard. So he looked around the backyard, trying to make everything make sense. And he saw a bicycle parked at the corner of the yard. And he also saw a bike track on the dirt ground. And this bike track was leading into the house through the back door. So Joe pulled out a dollar bill and measured what he thought would be the width of the tire on the bike track and then he also went to the bike at the corner to measure the tires but the tires of that particular bike were significantly thinner than the ones on the bike track. And Joe says that the bike track looked like a BMX track so he knew that he needed to go back inside the house and talk to Dante again. He asked Dante where he was and what he was doing on the Saturday that Autumn went missing while his brother was preparing to meet up with Autumn and Dante told him that he was actually in the basement working out. He also agreed to let Joe in to see his weights and like other equipment but this was just a strategy that Joe used to get to the basement because he knew that he was going to walk through the house and he would like look around and he also just wanted to get to the basement. So when they got to the basement Dante shows Joe where he was supposedly working out on Saturday and Joe finds it interesting that there were no hand or knee imprints on the dirt ground in the basement and you know you'd expect to see something some imprints knee imprints hand imprints footprints something on the dirt ground if somebody was working out there you know and there was also a bike track that was similar to the one outside in the basement but there was no bike in sight but anyways, Joe didn't ask about this bike track and he just continued looking around. On his way out of the basement, he did spot a door at the end of the basement. And when he reached out to try and open the door, Dante immediately stopped him. He didn't give him any specific reason why he didn't want him to look behind the door. So Joe thought it was a little bit suspicious. But we must remember that Joe was not a cop. And he also didn't have a search warrant, so he couldn't just look at whatever he wanted to look at without Dante's permission, you know? So he just said okay, and he left. He reported everything that he saw to the police, and that's when the police decided to get a search warrant and searched the Robinsons' house. At around 11.30 on Monday night, Autumn Pasquale's body was unfortunately found upside down in a recycling bin behind the Robinson's house. Apparently, the recycling bins were cleaned out on Tuesdays, so some people speculate that the boys put her in there, hoping that she would get thrown out with the trash as if she were trash. 
When Autumn's family was informed about the police's grim discovery, they were devastated. I think it's safe to say that this is every family's worst nightmare, but unfortunately for the Pasquale family, their worst nightmare had just come true. And this was even more devastating because the Robinsons lived just seven doors down from Barb's house. Remember, Barb was very close to the family, so you can just imagine how devastating it was and how sad the whole thing was. It was just heartbreaking, honestly. Her phone was found in the Robinsons' house and it was taped behind a toilet. Her pens were also found sealed in a bag on top of a table in the basement and her white BMX was also found inside the house and it was behind the door that Dante wouldn't let Joe open. A medical examination confirmed that Autumn had suffered blunt force trauma and that she had died from strangulation. The day after Autumn's body was found, one of the Robinson brothers confessed to killing her. But it was not 17-year-old Dante Robinson. It was instead 15-year-old Justin Robinson, who was Autumn's Facebook friend. It is believed that Autumn agreed to meet up with Justin in order to trade bike parts, but Justin had other plans. When Autumn couldn't find his house, he told her to go through the factory that led to his backyard because he didn't want anybody to see her go into his home. He also invited her in, but once she was inside, he initiated his plan to steal her bike. She was insanely in love with this bike, so she probably just wasn't gonna let somebody steal the bike. So when she put up a fight, Justin punched her and then killed her for her bike. In 2018, Justin also made a statement claiming that he and Autumn had agreed to meet up because Autumn wanted him to either install some bike part or fix her bike for the price of $10. And once he was done doing that, um, Autumn didn't want to pay him and she jumped over her bike and punched him. And he says that he found himself backed in a corner and he didn't know what to do. He didn't want to fight her, but she wasn't stopping. She wasn't, she wasn't cutting it. So he punched her. And then he also says that Autumn didn't stop still. So he put his hands around her neck in order for her to stop but immediately after she stopped he let go of her throat i will link the video down in the description box if you want to watch it but if you ask me this is total bullshit like you can't tell me that autumn pasquale jumped over her bike and punched this 15 year old boy in his own home with his 17 year old brother in the house and thought that she was going to get away with it. i don't think so i do think that autumn probably put up a fight when he wanted to steal her bike but i don't think that he killed her in self-defense like he's trying to make it seem like he killed her in self-defense and this is completely like this is just out of bs honestly it's bs it's unbelievable and i can't believe that he's actually trying to paint this picture for the public it's actually aggravating to even imagine that somebody is trying to make it seem like oh i killed this 12 year old girl in self-defense she came inside my house jumped her bike punched me in the face and i had to strangle her long enough to kill her but i only thought that i was making her unconscious i like i don't bite i'm sorry i don't bite i know that he was a minor but i really don't bite i just think he had all this time to come up with this story and he believed that it was believable but it was still pathetically unbelievable so i just don't believe it i think it's bullshit but you guys feel free to, to tell me what it is that you think in the comment section down below and maybe we can have a discussion about this Anyway, Dante pleaded guilty to obstruction of justice and I'm not sure what his sentence was. But on the 12th of September 2013, Justin Robinson accepted a plea deal to aggravated manslaughter and he was given 17 years in prison. He is currently scheduled to be released in 2027 
at the age of 30. This is heartbreaking. I'm not gonna lie, this is heartbreaking. And I think that a lot of times, I heard this on a true crime story that I was watching yesterday. Somebody said a lot of times people look at this thing, these things, these um true crime stories as just stories, you know, and we don't understand that there are families that are affected by this. I mean, I do. I've always known that. And that's why sometimes I try to put myself in the victim's shoes or like the victim's family's shoes and I empathize with them. And that I think that's why I can't get over the... F like, I just can't get over her murder and I can't get over the events that followed and I can't get over this 2018 statement that this boy tried to make in order to make himself look like the victim in this whole thing anyways that brings us to the end of today's video if you guys found this video informative or enjoyable or entertaining or anything please click on the like button and also please click on the subscribe button and also turn on your post notifications so that you get notified each time i post a new upload and you don't miss out because i know you don't want to miss out so just do it do it and you guys already know i'll see you guys next time